Hey guys, what's up? It's Paul Salazar, and today you're gonna get our first market update. It is just past Q1, 2023. We're in the beginning of April. Yes, ULA is now enforced. This is the new tax for sales over $5 million. So today we're gonna talk about inventory levels. We're talking about demand, listings sold, uh, and we'll talk about one interesting data that you'll like at the end. So make sure you watch until the end. If you like videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. All right, let's get started. So let's talk about inventory levels. It's a really good data point when you're looking at, you know, the supply and demand here in Los Angeles. Right now, we're at 2,300 listings. We're about 14.5% more listings available. Uh, and this is from, you know, this is kind of our market from Los Feliz all the way to Malibu, as far south as LAX, and some parts of the valley as well, not including Hidden Hills and Calabasas and Westlake Village. Uh, so right now, we're at 2,300 uh, available listings on the market. We're up 14.5% compared to last year. We can't really compare it to last year um, because last year there was historic low interest um, inventory levels. Uh, but when you're looking at pre-pandemic levels, right, before March 2020, then your, your average inventory levels in the same area was around 3,000. So we're, 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 we're down 35% right now in inventory levels, pre-pandemic levels. The reason why inventory levels is so important, because if you're a buyer out there or a seller, you want to know what the competition is like. If you're a buyer, you want to know how much supply there is in the market. So there's not a lot of supply right now. And for sellers, uh, it's also interesting because, you know, even though there there is more inventory than last year, we're still at historic lows compared to pre-pandemic levels. Um, but a lot of listings are still sitting on the market. And why is that? Well, interest rates, right? Pre-pandemic levels, interest rates were on average around 4%. Uh, uh, you know, from 2018 to 2020. Right now, they're at six and a half for a conforming and six for a jumbo. So a lot of buyers are just kind of waiting to see what happens with the market. Inventory levels now correlates to month supply on the market. When you're looking at month supply, it's a good indication if it's a buyer's market, a seller's market, or a neutral market. So zero to four months is gonna be a seller's market. Four to six months is gonna be a neutral market. And then six months plus, is going to be a buyer's market right now we're at four months of inventory so we're right at the edge of a seller slash neutral market um, but again this is in the entire uh kind of greater la area that we serve um uh pre-pandemic levels was also around four months of inventory last year it was at two months of of, of uh, inventory which was a really hot seller's market last year so right now we're about four months and what does that mean all right so if you have 10 houses in a certain area. So let's just say Beverly Hills, right? There's 10 houses in Beverly Hills that are on the market and there's an average of two months, uh, two sales per month um, uh, in Beverly Hills and there's no new inventory that hits the market, then it's gonna take five months for those 10 houses to sell, right? So that's five months of inventory, that will be a neutral market. So that's how we calculate uh, inventory levels. Um, if you're a buyer or if you're a seller, it's important to note that even though um, in certain areas it, it could be a very strong buyer's market, um, there could be a house that's priced well, that is moving ready, that may get multiple offers, right? So it, it's a good metric to look at in uh, for a general sense of where the market is at. If you're a buyer or if you're a seller and you wanna find out if you're selling in a buyer's neutral or seller's market, reach out to us, give us a call, shoot us an email. Uh, because the way we do it is that we, we specifically get into a, a, a geographic area. So if you're selling in the, in the flats of Beverly Hills, for instance, and your house is worth $10 million, then I'm only gonna look in the flats and I'm gonna look at homes that are selling between seven and $13 million, right? So kind of there's like a 20 or 30% swing uh, lower and higher. And then we can get a good idea uh, if you're either, you know, as a buyer or a seller, if it's a seller's market, a buyer's market or a neutral market. And that way you can, you can make a better decision um, when it comes to listing your house or buying a house in that area. Okay, so let's talk about demand because um, that is also a good indication of where we're at currently and what's gonna be closing in the next 30 to 60 days. 
So right now there is about a 37% drop in demand compared to last year. Right now we're seeing 539 houses under contract. Last year, same time, 856 houses under contract. And then pre-pandemic levels for demand was 838. So last year, actually, the, the amount of houses under contract in, in, in this exact time was equivalent to what it was pre-pandemic levels. Um, so we're seeing a really, really steep drop off in demand. And obviously that has to do with rates, has to do with uh, what's going on in the economy, the banking system, obviously, uh, you know, the, the following of SVB Bank and some of the other banks as well. Now that we've covered inventory levels, we've covered month supply, we've covered demand, let's talk about days on market. Also an important stat when it comes to being a seller, right? So right now the average days on market for houses sold is actually really low. It's at 37 days uh, is the average days on market. Uh, that is down 27%. Uh, compared to last year. Last year was 29 days, but pre-pandemic levels was 53 days. So we're still 30% less days on market for sold listings. Um, so really interesting data point um, because, you know, if you're selling a house, I see a lot of houses out there that are on the market for over 100 days, over 200 days, and they're not selling. A lot of those houses are coming back off the market they're getting a price reduction and then they're selling after 30 or 60 days, which is not a good indication of days on market. So this this data point is, is, is um, not as accurate as I would like it to be because when an agent takes a house off the market and then puts it back on at a reduced price, then obviously the days on market is gonna be less, but it's been on the market before for maybe 180 days, right? Um, but still, overall, we're seeing that the houses that are selling are selling quicker and the reason why is because they're probably moving ready and they're priced well. Those are the houses that are selling and they're selling in multiple offers. But there's houses that are overpriced and they're not moving ready that need work. Those are the ones that are, are staying a little bit longer on the market, you know, two, three, four, even six months or maybe not even selling. So now let's talk about listings sold in the same area. And this is all for single family residences. Right now, uh, as of early April, we're seeing 1,113 houses sold. That is a huge drop from last year. It's a 41% drop from last year. Last year, we're at 1,882 listings sold year to date from January 1st until the beginning of, uh, the beginning of April or the end of Q1. Uh, compared to pre-pandemic levels, we are down about 12%. Uh, it, it, the average pre-pandemic levels for Q1 was around 1,248 listings sold. So now that we've covered a lot of the data, now you can make a better decision for you and your family on what to do. Um, you know, as, a, as an agent, I always like to provide the data, ask questions and let the client uh, decide what they wanna do. If it's, you know, if you're a buyer and you, and you wanna wait, if you're a seller, if, if you wanna wait, whatever it is, you know, it's always important to know what the data points are. That way you can make a better decision for yourself. So as I promised in the beginning of the video, I wanted to share with you a really, really, kind of not really good news about the ultra high-end market, right? So we're, we're talking about 20 plus million dollar um, sales in the same area, right? From Los Feliz, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Hollywood Hills, Brentwood, Palisades, Santa Monica, Malibu, right? As far south as, um, as LAX. There's 142 houses on the market right now, over $20 million. On average, over the last three months, it's around four sales per month, which gives you a 36 month supply for houses over $20 million. That is not really good. 30% of those houses are newer houses, so new construction, so developers are, are actually own those properties or investors own those properties. Uh, so if you're a buyer looking in that range, obviously you have uh, uh, a much better selection of, of, uh, of what to pick, as well as more negotiating power. So if you're a seller, make sure you consult with us so that we can give you a little bit more specific data on where you're selling. But of those 142 houses over $20 million in the greater Los Angeles area, most of them are gonna be in Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills Post Office, Bel Air, and Malibu, all right? Again, thanks for watching guys. If you would like more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can reach me directly on my cell, 310-387-1976, or you can email me and my team at info at paulsalazargroup.com, and I'll see you next month. See you later.